Welcome to TrueBuds TV, Cannabis Enthusiast Series. What's up? Welcome to TrueBuds TV, Cannabis Enthusiast Series. It's your buddy Jack, and I'm here with Chris today. How you guys doing today? You've seen him before. You know his face. You know this man here. Started off at an early age, probably at uh, 15. That was my first experience with cannabis. Uh, you know, it's really changed over the last like 20 years. It's pretty crazy to see how like far everything's come with it. But yeah, just started off when I was young, met a buddy, never seen a bong in my life, you know? What's that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we I remember uh, smoking in his room for the first couple times, and it's pretty cool. Uh, using paper towel rolls with a bounce in it to blow the smoke through. Spoof I don't know what we called it, but that was that was the way to you know trick their parents, you know, that were totally in denial. Obviously, they would, knew we were smoking weed up there like every friggin' day, but. You know, that was the that, that was the beginning, like, you know? Thinking about that and like vaping now. Like yeah, it's and... you can just get like an electronic pen and we used to ride our skateboards down Ventura Boulevard from like uh, Woodland Hills to Reseda, like ten miles Shit. to pick up an ounce of weed for sixty bucks back then <laughs> and it would be like half seeds, half stems, and a little bit of weed mixed in there, you know? <laughs> and we would take, like, my buddy would take a, like a sifter and he would rub it on there, you know, and to get all the seeds out and stuff, and you'd end up with like a powder at the end and you just smoke that and that was it, you know? And then uh, one day, Chronic came along, you know? And that was like a game changer right there because it was always the stress and he was like, "Oh, when you try this, you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be laying on the floor laughing." <laughs> and I'm like, "Dude, we smoke weed all the time. Fucking, yeah, right, man. You know, first uh, bong hit a chronic, dude. It came in a little tiny bag this big, one gram, one bowl, laying on the floor. I'm like, oh, I feel like the room's going downhill, you know. So just right then, it was like, wow." you know, game changer, you know, and then from there on, it was mostly about always getting the dank, you know, and, uh, and you've been, you know, I know we've talked about this in some of our other, other episodes, we've done some like growing videos. Yeah. Like, I don't know if we talked about it before, though, like how long or like, have you been growing for it? Kind of like when? Uh, I've been trying to grow since we were 15, you know, but it didn't work out when you were kids. People would steal them. You didn't know what you were doing. You would, they would die. You'd get a bunch of male plants. But I've been growing myself, growing my own for like five years now. You know, I've probably gone to a collective two or three times in the last five years to buy a bag of weed, so. Bro, he yeah, it right. You know, <laughs> that's, that's the way it, people should do it, you know? Weed should be free or really cheap, you know? That's, that's how I feel about it. You've had other experience too with like a commercial yeah. style. If yeah. you don't mind uh, shedding a little light on that and kind of your experiences with that. Yeah, I did uh, have like a 40 light operation with like five different rooms, clones, veg, three flowering rooms. And, you know, I just saw what goes into that. And it's just like a crazy amount of work to produce on that level, you know, and with the way it is now with like the commercial business, a 40 light grow is like tiny. You need to have like a 400 light operation to really be in the business now because big money is coming in and you know, it's, it's hard to get paid. It's hard to get top dollar for your product. Every little flaw in there, you're going to get nickel and dime for at the shops. But now it's like a whole process, you know? So it's like, if you have a 40 light grow, you're doing black market most likely because there's just too much money with like having all your products lab tested and then you have to go through a distributor, licensed distributor to even get it to like a certified shop. But then, then also there's all the pre-packaging that you have to do too. So there's like three levels that you have to pay for you know, before, and that's that's not even including trimming, you know, that's another expense too. So there's like 
after all that, how much money is left for the grower, unless you're doing it yourself, you know, and you put in all the money yourself, it's, it's hard out there, you know, the, the markets are like flooded with a lot of good product around here. And up north in Oregon, it's just, they're overloaded with bad product, you know, oh, so really? yeah. You can get ounces up there for like forty dollars, you know, eights like, for five dollars. Like it's a like. lot of mids, you know. The market's flooded with mids up there, and it's just uh, it's pretty crazy, dude. But it was a cool experience running that commercial grow and just like seeing how it's done and well, seeing how much how much, how much work it is. The setup I was running wasn't like the most ideal setup. It was like a real backbreaker. You know, so you need to get like an ideal setup or else it's just like, it's an overwhelming amount of work, honestly. It's like know what you're getting. And it's like, I was talking about this earlier. It's like, you feel like a lot of people too who want to come in and drop money into the cannabis space don't really fully, a lot of them might not fully grasp what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. They think you can just grow it and sell it, but it's like, they don't think about like, all right, so we're going to grow all this bud, right? But then now we have to, change out all that soil or get rid of you know 800 rock wool cubes and then replace all that and then we have to you have to scrub your rooms and clean your rooms and then the lights have to be replaced every six months to a year the bulbs and it's just a lot of upkeep and then all the nutrients you know it's just so expensive you know and then there's so many options out there and it's hard to like really decide what's gonna work best unless you do it for a long time and you can like do side by side tests and see what's gonna like work best for you. It's crazy how much goes into it, bro. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's really crazy, how did, yeah. Um, how did your, um, sorry, uh, how did your winter harvest pan out? Or I remember well, you yeah, I, this winter I started uh, a bunch of plants like later in the season in uh, maybe late June so the point was to do some back crossing because I, I don't know if we did a video about it, but I got some seeds of Sunset Sherbert and Grape Sea Kittles, okay. you know, and I grew those last year and then I crossed those with a, a male to just produce some more seeds. So then I grew those out this year, you know, and I grew more seeds of those of males and I back crossed them with their own strains. So you have all those seeds. Yeah, right? so now I've got like 15 different new strains that I'm going to be testing out this year because I had like, there's different like phenotypes each strain. So I had a bunch of different female phenotypes, which I crossed with the male. So now I'm just stacked up with like packs and packs of Bro. seeds, you know, so I'm excited about this year to test out some of the new strains I got. They turned out pretty good, but the problem is with messing with pollen and pollinating, you know, if you don't have like two different spaces to do it in, you can get some pollen on some of the females. So it happened to some of my female plants is they got some like little immature seeds in it, which kind of sucks. Little like, it, like hollow looking. Yeah, because they, they got pollinated too late, you know, because I didn't keep the male like far enough away and it can blow over in the wind and stuff oh, like okay. that. So it screwed up a little bit of my female plants, you know, but it was worth it. Now I've got seeds for years. So when are you doing your next planting? Or do you I already planted some of the, just the straggling yeah, seeds. You, you always Dude. keep rotation, bro. <laughs> I've got like a bunch of plants just growing around of all the straggling seeds that I'm, I don't have sorted by strain. I've just got them going now to like test out to see if there's anything really strong that'll survive the winter and be like, you know, I'm not really taking good care of them just to like see if they're strong. And I'm just testing it out to like see how they're going to go in the winter time, oh, yeah. you know, but they're doing good for now. And then uh, March 15th, that's the day to plant right oh, there. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's some like hippie moon cycle stuff, right, so you know? We can grab a video. Of yeah, so we'll there. plant a bunch of seeds on March 15th in the ground, and then again on April 13th, again, it's like the next new moon cycle. And then we'll just get a bunch of stuff going. I've got like four different people I'm gonna get uh, growing this year. So the plan is to get all these plants going, make some clones, and then I'm looking for someone to start testing them out indoor so we can like pinpoint which strain is going to be the best one. And they'll actually be your strain that you've 
Yeah, it will be my strain. I didn't do all the work. Whoever made up Sunset Sherbert and Grapesea Kittles, they laid like the backbone yeah. for it. But it's like two years in the making of my work, you know. Do you, so do you it's, know how that like the legality of that works? Like, uh, there is like, no legality of that right now. Some people like to bitch and moan and say mm -hmm. like that's their strain and. There's a lot of like people on Instagram and like the growing community that like fight about like who made what strain and this is the, that how that strain got made. But there's no like trademarks for strains or anything like that. Covered. I don't think so because it, it's too like what are they gonna do like test like the DNA of a strain to like prove it's yeah. exactly the same thing? You could just change the name, you know. And there's a lot of people that are they get mad when like they'll give someone like a clone of their special strain and then they go on to make seeds of it and profit off of that you know so there's like it's like a integrity thing with some people but you know it, if you have it you have it yeah you know i don't know you know so there's there's some new like really popular strains out there there's this one called mac that's like hitting the market. Yeah, that's like the new, yeah, the new rave. Yeah, they have it sometimes. Like MAC the, or is it? Yeah, a MAC. Thing? It's like miracle alien cookies. Do they sell next to laptops and iPhones? Oh, uh, they <laughs> should. But it's uh, that's supposed to be like the best shit out there right now. I haven't yet to try it, but I'm trying to get my hands on some of the seeds of that, oh, yeah. so I can, uh, you know, give that one a go. Your preferred method is a bong. Yeah, I like to smoke out of a bong. Grew up smoking out of bongs. Uh, well, that's, that's, yeah, it's, I feel like, I don't know, the water like filters it, you see all the crap that gets on the bong and I'm like, that's well, true. that's not in my lungs, so, <laughs> or like dabbing's pretty good too, but it's a little much for me, it's a little bit of work, but yeah. definitely the flavors you get from a dab are pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing is like it's cool, but to me it is kind of a lot of work sometimes, man. It's like, yeah. Like this, like this, cool. It's like, you know, it's kind of one of those like take it. Yeah. They have some pretty cool like electronic, like portable ones and stuff, but it's like a few hundred dollar investment, you know? So. I have some of the nectar collectors that are pretty bad. I've never tried one of those. So I'll, I'll, I'll how give is you that? One. Oh, okay. Next time I see you, I have one. I have like 20 of them. Nice. Yeah. Cool, man. <laughs> so I've been kind of asking everybody this, man, is. What about like the future of cannabis makes you the most excited? Uh, just it's getting like better and better, you know, like the more people keep making new strands and like, you know, breeding for good genetics, you know, like the better it's going to get, you know, the more like people are breeding for terpenes, you know, so they'll grow like 40 or like they'll grow hundreds of plants, right? And they'll flower them out find the ones with the best traits and then like they all will look awesome but they're looking for that one with that like crazy smell or taste you know so they're just pinpointing stuff and stuff's getting better and better with like the craft community but hopefully that can keep going and they don't you know stop the smaller growers you know because the bigger growers will never be able to grow on that level because you know when you have people working for minimum wage you're going to get minimum results that's, you know that's and that's problem. like and that's the reality of the cannabis industry maybe they have one head guy or whatever but like that head guy can't be there to like top each plant like perfectly mm -hmm. or you know be there to like it's just it's hard you know to like the bigger scale yeah, you do things you on like the more the right. more people it takes you know so it's it's tough but yeah, like you were talking earlier like from like you know when getting the chronic it's like crazy to think how in the past in the, you know 15 10 in the past decade like how far it's come it's it is crazy like, yeah like the one thing i'm really excited about is more like solventless product hitting the market you know, with just using like heat and pressure, or ice and water to get like prime extracts. It's really expensive, but if more people start growing at home, you know, your bud won't cost so much. Yeah. So you'll, people at home can make stuff like that. And like you can load that into those pens and stuff like See, that. I, I do want to do. But those are pricey to make, you know, because you got to use a lot of bud to make a it's little like, bit of product. You're better off buying it. Is, you know, well, if unless you're making it, it in big scale, but if you're just making like one cartridge or something, yeah, exactly. You know, it's it's up to you how hard you want to work. You know, but it's a lot of work well, to make that kind of I stuff. But I do want to do a video like that, like making a cartridge. 
Yeah, we just have to buy the, the cartridges uh, and then... You down to do that? Yeah. Hell yeah, I do. do <laughs> hey man, thanks for coming out again. Thank you guys for tuning in for another episode of Cannabis Enthusiast. We'll catch you guys later. Take it easy. You the man, bro. Thanks, thanks man. Out, bro. Yeah, dude. Thanks, Jack. What you got going on today? Well, I'm off today, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got today off. Yeah, it totally worked out. Check out TrueBudsTV.com for monthly giveaways, products, advertising, and exclusive cannabis content.